Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to the primary Sabbath school class, where our Sabbath school lesson this week is entitled, A New Name and a New Friend. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity to learn more about you. And as we go deep into our lesson study for today, help us to understand everything that we're talking about and help us to be able to share it with others. In your name, I do pray. Amen. All right, boys and girls, learning more about God and his love and his son, Jesus Christ, is our number one priority in this Sabbath school class. Let's dig a little bit deeper to learn more about this new name and the new friend. Before we begin, of course, we want to start with our good morning song. Are you ready? Let's go. Good morning, good morning, good morning, we say. We're happy, so happy to see you today. Good morning, good morning, good morning, we say. We're happy, so happy to see you today. How many of you are happy this morning, boys and girls? Well, I am because it is the Sabbath day and it is a day of rest and worship and peace. And I am just so happy about that today. Our memory verse for our lesson this week is coming from the book of Acts chapter 10 verses 34 and 35. Again, that's Acts chapter 10, verses 34 and 35. And let's read it together, boys and girls. It's a little bit lengthier this week than normal, but we got this, right? (laughs) All right, let's read it together. God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. Hmm, that word favoritism. Do you know what that word means? That means that God sees us all as equal and he doesn't love one person more than the other or wants one group of people to be saved and not another group of people to be saved. He doesn't show favoritism. God does not show favoritism according to our memory verse but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. And do you know what the word fear in this Bible text means? Do you think it means that God wants us to be scared? No, that's not what it's talking about. The fear in this Bible text is speaking about us as Christians respecting and loving God. He wants us to serve him out of love and respect and not out of fear. Okay, so that's our Bible text for this week. Let's start. My name is Barnabas. I'm a Christian, one who believes in Jesus Christ as the Messiah and my Savior. Much has happened since Jesus went back to heaven and the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost. Every day, new people are accepting the good news about Jesus. But many new believers are moving away from Jerusalem. It is becoming dangerous for believers to remain here. You may have heard about Saul and other Jewish leaders putting people in prison beating them, and sometimes putting them to death. As the believers move away, they are so full of the joy that comes from knowing Jesus that they just can't stop telling others about Jesus. The message is so good that they just can't keep it to themselves. The news of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection is spreading everywhere. 
This is certainly not what our persecutors had in mind. They don't want us to tell others about Jesus. Some of the new believers moved here to Antioch. There is a large Jewish community and many Gentiles, these are people who are not Jewish, also live in this place. Antioch is an important city. It is a very beautiful city, but also very wicked. Yes, I said it. It's also a very wicked city dedicated to heathen Greek gods. When the believers moved here to Antioch, they began to tell their new neighbors and their new friends about the wonderful gospel. They told everybody, Jews and Gentiles, this was something different. The Lord blessed them and many Gentiles had joined the believers. The news about these new converts spread back to the apostles and other believers in Jerusalem. Some of the church leaders there were worried. They were not too sure that God wanted everyone to hear the good news. After all, the Jews are God's chosen people. So the leaders asked me to travel to Antioch and find out what was happening. So when I arrived, I saw that the believers here have truly been blessed by the Lord. They really do understand the grace of God. I am so happy. I'm encouraging the believers to remain true to the Lord and to continue telling others about Jesus. As a result, many more people are becoming followers of Jesus. I quickly realized that I needed help. I thought about Saul and how he had changed after meeting Jesus on the road to Damascus. He even had a new name. Now he was called Paul. It took me some time to find him. I traveled to the city of Tarsus where Paul was born. When I found Paul there, he was teaching others about Jesus. Yes, Paul, who used to be called Saul, who was now converted, was teaching others about Jesus. Paul agreed to come back to Antioch with me and we began working together to spread the good news. We had been here for almost a year now, preaching the gospel, preaching the gospel. And many people, both Jews and Gentiles, have accepted Jesus as Lord. Praise God. And we have a new name. Because all the believers talk about Christ, we are called Christians. I have heard rumors that the name is spreading to other places as well. I think it's a good name. I think being called a Christian is what we're about. We are followers of Christ. It tells everyone who we believe in. I'm glad Paul and I have become friends, and I'm glad that we are teaching the Gentiles the good news about Jesus Christ. How about you? Are you telling others about him? Paul and Barnabas discovered that God's grace is freely available to everyone. The good news was just not for the Jews. It was for everyone. This tells us that God is a God of grace and that he gives grace to everyone. No one is excluded or left out. And that, boys and girls, let, reminds me of our message for today. And I want you to say it with me. God's grace includes everyone. Let's say that again. God's grace includes everyone. He loves everyone. He loves you. He loves me. He loves our family. He loves everyone in the whole, whole, whole wide world. 
And so that reminds me of the song, Oh How He Loves You and Me. How many of you know this song, boys and girls? All right, so if you don't know it, here's an opportunity to learn it. And if you do know it, I want you to sing along with me. Are you ready? Let's sing. Oh, how he loves you and me. Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life. What more could he give? Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you and me. And here's another verse to that same song, boys and girls. Let's try this verse. Jesus to Calvary did go. His love for sinners to show. What he did there brought hope from despair. Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life. What more could he give? Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you and me. God's grace, boys and girls, includes everyone. Let's pray. God, we thank you for including everyone and providing opportunities for all of us to experience your grace. Thank you for showing us how much you love us each and every day. Help us to be willing to share the good news of salvation with others that we meet. Help us to be courageous and to win souls for your kingdom. And we're not too young to do that. Bless us this day. In your name I do pray. Amen. Amen. All right, boys and girls, until next time, keep growing in God, keep loving others, and keep sharing the good news about Jesus with everyone you meet. Until next time, goodbye.